here. What it do? What it do, Bill? They call us going live at four four times, Sally. So what it do? Hello to Apunya. Hi there. Uh, let's see who's joining us. Hi to Nurbai. Hi to Curly Tashi. Hello to K Ibrahim from South Africa. Well, wow. hello to you in South Africa. Hello to Jade. So right now we're going live on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Clubhouse. So join us if you haven't already. But hello to everyone. Hello to J.E. Uh, Porter asks, how are you guys? We're good, except for Tallinn spending an hour trying to get a refund on our flight. I have spent the past one hour on the phone with Chase and American Airlines. Damn you, Chase. And I still haven't gotten my refund because of problems that I'm not going to bore you with. That's and what I they could do. literally die. It's what, it's, what the, it's what the airlines do. First, they screw you with not getting you on your flight. Second, they screw you by not giving you a connecting flight. Third, they don't. Okay. They make you work to get they the money back. They make you work okay. to get the money back that you deserve. And it makes me so annoyed. Shrub, nice to see you guys again. All right. Let's I could really do with advice today. So, yes, we're going to give a lot of PCOS advice. And let's start with, is cardio harmful? Why? Question mark asks money. Well, great question. So there's, there's nothing harmful about cardio when it comes to PCOS. We when we talk about working out for PCOS, we try to talk about working out for uh, to get down to the root cause of the PCOS weight gain and why it could be difficult to lose weight with PCOS. Now, cardio can be effective for you know uh, improving car uh, cardiovascular health. However, one thing it doesn't help with is getting down to helping with the insulin resistance for long-term results. So when you do cardio, you're doing uh, a cardio session where you're burning calories, yes. But after the workout, is it still helping with your insulin resistance and your metabolism? Not very much. So studies show that when you do workouts like weight training, they help to pick up the sugars in the bloodstream, helping with insulin resistance. But what they also do is increase your metabolism, uh, sometimes up to several days, which will obviously help with the weight loss um, plan. Now, it also helps to permanently increase your metabolism as you maintain the muscle mass. So it, it helps to basically reverse the metabolic dysfunction that's happening with PCOS. So cardio is not harmful. However, when you do cardio uh, in a very intense way where you're pumping stress hormones, for example, if you're out of breath, if you're running to the point where you basically you can't catch your breath or um, your heart is beating so fast that it feels like it's going to jump out of your chest, then those could... Um, pump up stress hormones like cortisol and it's been shown through uh, studies that cortisol can lead to weight gain specifically in the midsection so um, that's why we don't recommend just doing cardio but um, doing more of uh, weight training and of course you can throw in um, some like resting cardio on your uh, active rest days i saw some questions about carbs uh-huh so I know I talked about it in my stories the other day, and I showed you a delicious meal yesterday that had carbs in it, rice, pineapple. Mm -hmm. So if you are wondering if you can have rice with PCOS, yes. The yeah. answer is yes. And before my Instagram stories expire, you might want to listen to them because I talk about how to balance, keep your blood sugar balanced while still enjoying your carbs. Yeah. Basically, it's about how you pair your foods, it's about what time you're eating, and it's about your carb tolerance, and if you know your carb tolerance. And um, basically, by pairing foods, I mean making sure that your blood sugar isn't on a roller coaster ride, so you're not just eating carbs alone, you're pairing it with protein like chicken so that it slowly absorbs into your bloodstream. For example, yesterday we had this delicious pineapple chicken with um it was like hawaiian barbecue chicken with rice and i was really mindful of the ingredients i was using and how i was pairing it so we had the rice and the chicken that's the chicken's going to help slowly absorb the sugar into my bloodstream right because rice breaks down into sugar mm -hmm. and the barbecue sauce i used was low in sugar five grams of sugar only in two tablespoons. And I think I used like four tablespoons for like six servings. So it was really nothing. Um, whereas other barbecue sauces, you probably have 15 grams of sugar in two tablespoons. So just being mindful of what you're eating can really help with keeping your blood sugar stable. So it's not 
going up, going down, pumping all this insulin and causing more insulin resistance, which is what, oops, we were paused. Insulin resistance, which is what is triggering the weight gain with PCOS. And with that being said, carb tolerance is super important. And we talk about that in the sisterhood, our monthly membership program. You can join in if you go to PCOSweightloss.org. Yeah, I'll put that below. I literally break it down for you how to discover your carb tolerance. You can even track your carbs with the download. Oops. Okay, you're good. You can even track your carbs with the download that I've provided. Um, and that'll help you learn exactly how many carbs are right for your body that make you feel nourished when you're eating your meals. So you're not feeling restricted and going on crazy diets like keto. Yes. So keto does work for some people, but it's really just the shortcut to healing insulin resistance. And it's really, if you want something long-term for insulin resistance, then you're going to have to incorporate different things like Sirak mentioned, yeah. proper exercises, the way you eat, yeah. carb tolerance. Keto is a, a great question about keto. And a lot of times why um, you may hear about people seeing results with keto is it immediately helps with lowering your carbs, which can um, help at first with your insulin resistance. However, it's not very sustainable because to basically reverse PCOS to put it into remission, you have to find something that's going to work for the rest of your life. So it's not that it's not like PCOS is curable to the point where you can find something, it works, and you no longer have to worry about it. It's you have to find something that you can do for the rest of your life that's going to help you keep your PCOS in remission. So for us, we don't find keto to be sustainable for that reason. And instead, we suggest to basically find your carb tolerance instead, you know, a range of carbs that's good for you that you can basically follow for, uh, you know, uh, rest of your life if that's what works and basically um, help to uh, reverse your PCOS symptoms for the rest of your life. Uh, question about um, hair help, how to reverse hair loss or facial hair? Uh, great question from Chris, Chrissy as well as SA. So uh, I just want to say first thing, if you're experiencing hair loss, facial hair, you can reverse those symptoms. We've seen in 99.9% .9 of cases, sisters being able to res uh, reverse those symptoms. And it's about getting down to the root cause of the issue. Now, one of the reasons, uh, one of the root causes of hair loss and facial hair is insulin resistance. Now, you've talked, you've heard of us uh, talking about this all the time. Um, uh, but insulin resistance can lead to a surge of testosterone. Now, this is obviously going to lead to um, uh, um, hair. facial hair as well as hair loss, but you want to add some details yes. onto the insulin resistance aspect and what else is happening? That's Basically, to our testosterone converts into the most potent form, which is DHT, and that is what gathers around our hair follicle and causes light hair on our face to turn dark or causes hair loss. And in many cases of hair loss, you can grow it back. Some Cases are very extreme and you might need other procedures, but usually with PCOS, you can. And it just takes some consistency, six to 12 months of consistency of treating the root problems of your PCOS. And so once you do that, then you're going to see the results. So what is that? That's doing, um, making sure that your blood sugar is stable, making sure that your stress hormones are stable, making sure that you are doing the best with your inflammation. And so we talk all about this, and that includes going gluten and dairy-free. That will surely help with inflammation levels, at least for 30 days if you try it, and then you add it back in after the 30 days, and you'll see if it works for you. You'll see if your skin gets better, if your hair is getting help. Well, you won't see in one month, but you'll see your skin get better, your weight get better, things like this. Um, and then for insulin resistance, again, like I said earlier, you know, pairing your foods and making sure you're doing slow weighted workouts, that's going to help with blood sugar and with stress hormones. Yeah. So, so many different factors. It takes some time to get used to. You just have to be patient, but six to 12 months of consistency and you'll see your hair growing back. Yes. Great answer, babe. 
And there was a question about what kind of weights can I start with to start working out? So when it comes to slow weighted workouts, all you really need is five, 10, 15 pounds maximum. And by doing the workouts in the way we teach you, you know, we're doing it slowly and we're implementing uh, ways to effectively engage our muscles. We're keeping the stress hormones low. So you're building lean muscle in this way without really worrying about bulking up because the way we work out, we don't, it's not going to bulk you up where you're going to get all that muscular. We're more focused on building lean muscle because that's where really um, you can improve the insulin resistance. You can reverse metabolic dysfunction. You can help to uh, make sure that the cortisol levels are low so that there's no um, cortisol dysfunction happening. Uh, so a sister uh, Aj asked, is one kilogram dumbbell okay? So I think that's about like three pounds. That should be okay for some workouts. I think for most workouts, you're going to need about 5, 10, 15 pounds. So I would say look for um, uh, look for something like that that's going to get you in that range. And of course, in the sisterhood, we teach you how to work out so you know how to use the weights, how to find the weights that are right for you, and basically help you work out on your own too. So, yeah. All right. So what dose of CBD oil do you recommend? Ooh, good question. Well, I love this question. Let me show. Let me talk to you about CBD oil for a yeah. second. So you hear us yammering about it. Sometimes I take it at night. Um, basically, CBD oil helps with cortisol levels. You want yeah. your cortisol stress hormone to be um, low at night so you can go to sleep and relax and your melatonin is high. And you want cortisol to be high in the morning so you wake up energized yeah. and ready to go. Mm -hmm. And so basically, um, basically, I'm just <laughs> I was reading comments. Okay. So when your cortisol is high in the mornings, you feel like you can get up and go on a walk and start your day. So a lot of times with PCOS, we don't wake up with energy because of cortisol dysregulation, feeling stressed and anxiety, and you can't sleep, and you wake up without energy, and you can sleep, you know, all throughout the day, but not at night. Yeah. So CBD helps with cortisol levels. Yeah. Amongst other things, like, of course, you have to do other things to help with cortisol, like turning off your screens after, you know, eight o'clock. Make sure you're not staring at blue lights that stimulate, you know, cortisol or lower your melatonin. So yeah. that's super important, too. So what you want to do is pair some great lifestyle changes with CBD yeah. and get your sleep under control because it's going to help with weight loss, too. Yeah. Insulin resistance can get worse if you get... um if you miss out on at least five hours of sleep throughout the week, you can become, I think, 30% more insulin resistant. So yeah, super important. So this one too is, this is called Pure Spectrum CBD. This is the brand that we like. We're also an affiliate. They're a sponsor of the podcast, but it's something I personally was taking years before they were um, an uh, advertiser on the podcast. But basically, if you go to purespectrumcbd.com, PureSpectrumCBD.com and use the code word the sisterhood one word you get 10% off and one of the reasons that we like this brand and of course you're welcome to choose any other brand that you like but one of the reasons we like this brand is that it has the full spectrum of CBD so if you don't know not all CBD is created equally because in order to mass produce sometimes companies will um, filter out some of the beneficial cannabinoids and terpenes in order to produce it uh, faster and cheaper. That's why when you go to like, like you know, a grocery store, you'll see like those random CBD gummies in the, by the registry or some random CBD company that you've never heard of. You know, a lot of them are cheaply produced. Why? And that's why they, you know, um, aren't as effective. So Pure Spectrum CBD, they they have the full spectrum of cannabinoids. But if you have an, if you know it of any other company that does this then that's great go for those two but we like them and if you're wondering about dosage 500 milligrams seem, seems to be the standard 500 milligram um you can go lower to 250 or higher to like a thousand and higher but i think 500 is good you can take it um, when you take cbd oils you want to put it under your tongue and keep it there for one minute so it gets absorbed through your mucous membranes. I think membranes. I need some right now. American Airlines really took me on to all types of levels of stress, let me tell you. All right, here you go. So you're going to put it <laughs> under the tongue. Under the tongue. And Colin is going to keep it there uh, for one minute. Because why? You want it to be absorbed through your mucous membranes, which is the most effective way to absorb CBD into your body. Because if you eat it 
just straight up digest it through your mouth, or sorry, if you straight up eat it through your mouth right away, your liver liver will detox, I'm sorry, filter out some of the compounds in the cannabinoid and you won't get the full results. Uh, somebody asked, or somebody mentioned uh, in this from the sisterhood, the leg workouts really mm -hmm. killed me this uh, this month, the new one. The leg work, uh, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. Leg workouts are really important. Uh, we were talking about earlier about insulin resistance, but uh, specifically leg workouts, like thigh workouts, help to pick up the sugars in the bloodstream. It happens to be one of the largest muscles in your body. So really, really um, great workout. Love the new song intro, Catching Up. Love, um, wait, oh, sorry. Just, Just listen, listen to the, to the recent, recent podcast, po Catching Up. Love the new song intro. Yeah. Love that, Salma. Thank you. That's, you um, guys, if you haven't heard, go to our podcast and yeah. listen to our new song intro, yeah. our friend, Keys music, she sang it for us. Yes. Um, and her boyfriend produced it. D Y D X yeah. music. Yeah. Uh all right. So um what, why is C Dak looking so fine though? I don't know. I mean my wife is so fine, so I gotta keep up with her, but <laughs> I'd be looking fine, now, don't I? Now that I'm 30, I have that refined George oh, yeah. George Clooney look that I didn't have before. It happens when you turn 30. You automatically get that Brad Pitt look. And I'm just really living in it right now. Um, all right. So what to do... Sorry. No. Uh, what to do if weight is stuck? Even if I am taking care of what I eat and doing exercise yoga sometimes, but weight is stuck, I can't lose. Well, great question. I would say get some blood work done. See yeah. what's going on. Are your stress hormones still high? Maybe you need to do take some supplements. Maybe you need to change your lifestyle a little. Maybe your thyroid is out of control. Maybe that's a little too low. You know, you want to figure out what is happening underneath it all and not just assume that all of your lifestyle and diet changes are going to work because sometimes you know you need to investigate and see what's going on yeah okay, oh, okay. sorry <laughs> got a notification uh but that being said i think it's a good moment to kind of um uh, introduce ourselves so if you're new to our page let us know in the comments below uh if you're new to our page i think it's a good time to introduce ourselves so i am a pcos personal trainer i am talin's husband Colleen started this platform a couple of years ago herself to spread awareness for PCOS. And maybe she'll go ahead and um, introduce herself to you. Well, um, I started this platform because I have PCOS myself and I'm a registered dietitian. I was able to reverse my symptoms through diet and lifestyle changes and create this method that helps women with PCOS do what I did and what my patients have done. Then I married Sirak. Sirak hopped on board because he is a PCOS personal trainer and he has changed my workout game for the better. Handed sure. me the weights and made me do my squats. Not with the three pounds, not with the five pounds, but with the 10, 12, 15, 20. And I was not doing that before. And it has helped so much with my, sure, muscle definition, but also my insulin resistance. Yep. And I can totally tell a difference between when I used to not lift weights and now um, on how, you know, my hangry attacks don't happen anymore because I can handle it. But if I'm not doing weights, they come back. Let me tell you. So weights are super important. How did yeah. I get on this tangent? I don't know. I think what I was trying to say is I'm a registered dietitian, CDEX, a PCOS personal yeah. trainer. And our method is based off of lots of research done by naturopathic doctors who have actually reversed PCOS. Gynecologists. And gynecologists who have studied functional medicine. And people who have really investigated firsthand with their patients how to reverse PCOS. These are some of our favorite books. Yeah. And that is what our method is based off of rather than textbook. Only textbooks. Yeah. We're not only focused on textbook information. Obviously, we... Um, a lot of everything that we cover is based on research, evidence-based uh, uh, information that can be, that can be found in textbooks and things like that, as well as books like PCOS SOS by Dr. Phyllis Gersh. She's on the podcast this week, Woo! and books like Eight Steps to Reverse PCOS and many others. So we we're very um, we like to in, uh, focus on integrative medicine as well as um, as well as integrated as well as many other aspects of PCOS. So with that being said, one of our methods is 
um, going gluten and dairy free. It's something that's unique to our page, but we don't want to um, confuse anyone by saying that you have to go gluten and dairy free um, for PCOS. It's more of uh, one of our methods, one of our recommendations when you're diagnosed with PCOS to see if it can help you. So we recommend cutting it out for 30 days to see if you're sensitive to gluten and dairy and see if it can help you. There are some research studies showing the direct um, impact of uh, dairy to acne. So if you do have cystic acne, then going dairy free can help you. But there are also other reasons for it. So um, as did I have acne? Sorry, I didn't. Try. Yeah. Yes, I had cystic acne. I cut out dairy. I cut out gluten. It was all causing so much inflammation, causing my oil glands to just get so inflamed and overproduce oil. And they were like welts on my face. I literally, it hurt. So yes, I went gluten and dairy free. And now I'm fine. Yeah. Inside and out. Yeah. <laughs> And there is uh, research showing that, you know, um, dairy and gluten can impact insulin resistance. In fact, we, in the past, we've talked about IVF1. You want to talk about that real quick? In dairy? Yes. IFG, insulin-like I insulin growth factor. Sorry, IFG1. I don't know why it's IGF1. IVF1. <laughs> IGF1. Um, IGF1, insulin-like growth factor, is found in dairy. And so when you eat dairy, you have this spike in insulin. And, I mean, it can make you spike your insulin as much as if you had eaten sugar. So dairy counts as a carb. And so that's why it's super important to know that if you are insulin resistant and you're having dairy, it can really trigger it and make it worse. And I used to have dairy, you know, I was gluten and dairy free for a while. And then I was like, oh, I think I can tolerate a piece of cheese in the morning. So I'll just have like one slice every morning. It was so bad for my skin and inflammation. It took me like a whole month to cleanse it out of my system because first of all, I was in denial and I was still eating it for a few weeks. But, you know, it caused so much inflammation and I literally, my face just exploded and mm -hmm. it was triggering insulin resistance too. So that is some ways that dairy can affect our yeah. bodies. There's PCOS. also, yeah, there's also research showing, you know, the impact of gluten on your gluten. leptin hormone. Yeah, so gluten can impact your leptin hormone. Your leptin hormone is something like, quote unquote fat thermostat it basically reads how much fat is in your bloodstream in order to lower or increase your metabolism and when you have gluten it can decrease your leptin hormone sensitivity sensitivity which means it's not as able to read your fat levels in your blood leading to your um leading your uh, to your metabolism to not be where it should be after selma not hayek What's up, girl? She won a giveaway once. Woo! After being a little plateaued, I'm down 10 pounds in one month. Ovastol got me so somewhat regular, 35 days, but now 90 to 100% gluten-free and dairy-free. Can't quit butter. But thank you, my skin and body is so improved. That's amazing. That's wonderful. Great and job, Salma. I also want to say, like, I eat butter sometimes because there are certain things where, like, you just can't have oil instead of butter. Yeah. Um. So I just let that go in. I don't think it affects me too much. But yeah, I try to use oil, but sometimes I have butter. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be perfect. Shroff says, been trying gluten dairy free for weeks now. Surely can feel a difference. Decreased my cystic acne. That's amazing. Great job. That's Great good. job. Uh, and then somebody was asking about whether gynecologist or a... Um, endocrinologist so they're both great option an endocrinologist focuses on more hormonal disorders while a gynecologist can also help with the hormonal disorders but also work with you know um the function of your body your ovaries and such so both are great i would i would actually recommend to see both um so you could uh really focus on all the different factors of pcos that's going on thoughts <laughs> on alcohol one glass of uh, wine occasionally okay question mark says brit b Great question. That's a great question. I personally don't drink a lot because I don't prefer it. But I do think that when you're first starting out with treating your PCOS and your insulin resistance and inflammation and adrenal fatigue, all of these things, it's really important to get a little bit more strict with your routine just for the beginning, right? So I would tell my patients to have like one drink a week tone it down for a minute while you're trying to reverse your symptoms and get everything under control. Later, you can add it back in and see 
how you feel, right? But basically, they say like a woman can drink like one glass of wine a night or something. And I would say for PCOS, it is not ideal because our liver liver is already in struggle city. We when we have insulin resistance, which eighty percent of us do, our liver can become fatty liver. So. Basically, the sugar that should be broken down and used as energy by our cells, cells is not able to do that because the cells are insulin resistant, right? So that sugar goes and stores around, you know, our stomach area, around our organs, specifically our liver. And then we have a sluggish liver and we can't detox our hormones as well. Estrogen dominance can happen, things like this. So we really want our liver to work properly. Yeah. It is the detoxification system. It mm -hmm. is so important for hormonal health. And if we're drinking alcohol every single night and trying to heal our PCOS, we're really just doing a disservice for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I would cut it out for a second and then add it back in slowly and see how you feel. Yeah. All what right. about a liver detox pill? Oh my gosh, girl. Gaia. Where is ours? G -A -I -A. I've been looking. It's right there. You, you, you told me you were going to take it out and you were going to put it in the vitamin drawer. And I was like, it is. Oh. Go in the vitamin drawer right now. Go right now. You put that right now. You Yesterday. Lied. You put it right now behind my back right before you brought I'm up this I'm on the live. Topic. How was I supposed to do that? I don't know some black magic or something <laughs> anyways you forgot to bring it but that's fine oh shit <laughs> <laughs> it's so good you guys it's a liver detox it's um g-a-i-a -A. love it love you go. it gaia daily liver cleanse if you're insulin resistant if you're having trouble going to the bathroom regularly this is your friend mm-hmm Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's ask real quickly. Let's go look at YouTube for a second. Um, uh, someone said they had a rush from taking it. Well, Definitely don't take it. And someone from YouTube says, I have all the symptoms of PCOS besides cysts and acne, but the doctors don't seem to know what's going on. I've told them I think it's PCOS, but they disagree. So when it comes to PCOS, one of the um, difficult parts of it is the actual diagnosis. And the reason it, this can be difficult as well is because PCOS is a spectrum. That's what any syndrome is. Uh, it's a spectrum, meaning some people have more symptoms and others have less symptoms, hence the spectrum of PCOS. So that's why for some it can be easier to diagnose and for some it can be harder because of the dif different uh differing symptoms, but you need two out of three symptoms to be diagnosed with PCOS. Um, first is ovarian cyst. Second is hyperandrogenism. Hyperandrogenism, hyperandrogenism is elevated male hormones like testosterone. And third, irregular periods. So if you have two out of three, there's a very good chance you have PCOS. We still um, uh, highly suggest consulting your doctor to make sure um, they can you know, uh, confirm the diagnosis. Of course, getting an ultrasound will help to make sure you don't have ovarian cysts, but you know, the other aspects are still very um, important. So, all right. Um, I saw a question about being gluten and dairy free for a while mm -hmm. and not being able to lose weight. Oh, okay. So I love this question because it really just, everyone needs to know this. So going gluten and dairy free can give you an edge in treating insulin resistance and inflammation, things like this that women with PCOS already struggle with, right? So that's great, but it doesn't end there. There's so much you can do to help treat your insulin resistance, not just going gluten and dairy free, also discovering your carb tolerance, mm -hmm. also figuring out what type of PCOS you might have. There are four different types, insulin resistant, inflammation, adrenal fatigue, hypothyroidism, and you want to know what types you are or what type, one or two, three, four, all four, whatever, so that you can treat the root causes of your PCOS and help yourself with the weight loss process. So if you have a thyroid issue and you go gluten and dairy free, that's wonderful. It's great for inflammation. It'll help with not driving hypothyroidism into the ground, but you still need to go to a doctor. You need to figure out what your levels are, if you need medication or what. So there are other components to PCOS weight loss that you have to consider. Yeah. And even especially insulin resistance. 
um, it's a spectrum. You can be a little bit or a lot insulin resistant. So going gluten and dairy free can be great. And then you can also need to do a, a bunch of other things to help with insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And I think, break. no, not at all, not at all. And I think a lot of the confusion comes to because you maybe you may go on other PCOS accounts and they'll be like, you don't have to go gluten and dairy free, but try it for 30 days and see how it helps you. Very confusing, um, language. very confusing language. And they're also uh, misconstruing all the information. No one's no one is saying you have to go gluten and dairy free. It's merely a suggestion to see if it can help you with your PCOS. It's helped so many others, thousands of sisters. But, you know. They'll be like, you don't have to go gluten or dairy free. And then you'll read the end of the paragraph. But you can try and see if it helps you because there's been some benefits showing from it. And, and then, then they're gluten. Yeah. And then they're actually, they have PCOS and they're actually gluten and dairy free themselves. So they're just like being hypocrites and whatever. I'm not going to get into it. Anyways, um, I think uh, you get my point is that um, it can help. You can cut out for 30 days to see if it helps with your sensitivity. And yeah. See if it works for you. But honestly, with PCOS, you should try it because if you're not sure and you actually are sensitive, then all these efforts you're putting in for other things are not going to help you. And it's going to be failed attempts and it's going to suck because it's so much work to do all the other things, intermittent fasting, meditation, all of these things. If you're sensitive to gluten and dairy and it's causing all this inflammation. So first figure that out. Yeah. Then layer in the other components. Yeah. And then a question from a fellow sister on uh, YouTube. I'm experiencing thicker hairs under my uh, chin. I read it's um, related to androgen excess. And then also earlier, Manny asked about um, chunks of hairs falling out. So this goes back to insulin resistance. Um, taking Triggering high testosterone. Yes. That testosterone gathering around hair follicles, yeah. causing light to turn to dark hairs and the hair to fall out. Yeah. And uh, not to mention um, some supplements to help with it is also um, spearmint tea. So studies have shown that drinking spearmint tea um, three, four times a day can help with um, reducing testosterone. So um, one thing you can do is find like a decaf spearmint tea, drink that a couple times a day, see how it helps you. It can help lower the testosterone levels. So um, try that if that's something um, you're experiencing. I see a question about... Um yeah. It's my birthday very soon. My mom is making gluten and dairy free cake, but I'm worried about consuming so much sugar at once. Would it cause my insulin resistance to get worse? Mm. Listen, one day of cake is not going to make it worse. Yeah. Um, of course, I'm not saying eat the entire cake, although if you wanted to live your life. Yes. But insulin resistance is something that you want to treat consistently every day throughout the day. And so we are humans and we're not going to be perfect at it and things are going to come up and we're going to go to restaurants and it's going to be someone's birthday or our birthday or whatever. Yeah. And there's going to be moments where you have some sugar or you accidentally have gluten and dairy or purposely have gluten and dairy, whatever. And you have to be flexible mm -hmm. so that you can enjoy your life and create a lifestyle around this. And although it's sugar and it's cake, uh -huh. It's fine to have a slice and it's great that it's gluten and dairy free. That's even better. And, you know, I wouldn't feel bad about it. I would just have some and move on. Yeah, exactly. It's your birthday. Enjoy your birthday. It's like time was mentioning. It was talking about consistent. It's, it's all about consistency, not perfection. So, you know, it's, you, you can be mindful and um, see how, you know, how much you want to have. And then, you know, go back to your consistency afterwards, but it's your birthday. Enjoy and happy birthday to you, Brie. Happy early birthday. I it don't was know. CX birthday last weekend, and we had cake. Yeah, in the buddy. Fridge. Oh, my god! I'll tell you this. I usually never eat cake because I just find it to be, like, for, for me, I just find it to be too much sugar and all this jazz. <laughs> but I went all out on my birthday. But then he married me, and I make him a cake almost every good. single birthday that yeah. you've had so far. Pretty good. And I make it with my mom, and it's absolutely delicious. Mm-hmm. Uh, going gluten and dairy free helped me lose the weight I couldn't for four years, says Anastasia. Well, that's great. You go, congrats, girl. congrats. Um, all right, huh? Yeah. One, stone, go go on. One stone down of my four stone weight loss goal. Are nice. there certain exercises you shouldn't do? If I'm struggling, should I go to the doctor? I don't want to be put on the pill. Well, the doctor will put you on the pill. So there's that. There's no A other. A lot of doctors, well, not all doctors, but yeah. 
a lot of doctors, they will just be like, oh, yeah. just take birth control. Yeah, there's not much else that they do. But if you want to do like a naturopathic approach, you can find a naturopathic doctor who can give you more insight. Or you can join us in the sisterhood where we have lots of tips on yeah. other things and components you can add to your lifestyle aside from gluten and dairy free. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the exercises. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. She was asking like, are there anything, any exercises that we shouldn't do? Yeah. So if you're, um, if you're in your PCOS weight loss journey, we would recommend doing workouts like, like weight training workouts, specifically like slow weight workouts and avoiding really high intense workouts like, you know, kickboxing, uh, really intense cardio sessions. And we talked about it earlier, but I'm very happy to explain it again. When you do slow weight of workouts, it helps with the uh, it helps with the root causes of why it's difficult to lose weight with PCOS. So three reasons it can be difficult to lose weight with PCOS is one, the the um, the myth that you have to work out hard as possible to lose weight. Well, when you work out hard as possible, six, seven times a week, that just adds on to the cortisol dysregulation that's happening for a lot of PCOS women. So when you work out really hard, what happens is your body realizes that your body is under a lot of stress. So what does it do? It pumps adrenaline. It pumps stress hormones like cortisol to help you perform better. I mean, this is normal. It happens to a lot of people and it helps them perform better. It helps them finish the marathon. It helps them run faster, etc. But what happens after the workout? Well, after the workout, for, for people who don't have PCOS, their stress hormones usually get lowered and their adrenaline comes down and they're back to normal by nighttime or so. However, for women with PCOS, the cortisol can stay elevated and um, your stress hormones can stay elevated. And so you feel fatigued the next day. You feel like you're stressed out. You feel like your body hasn't recovered. Basically, like... Um, you can't get out of bed. And on top of that, you may not be seeing results. You may not be seeing um, uh, weight loss. So the other aspect is insulin resistance. When you do intense cardio, intense workouts, this insulin resistance uh, can get worse because when you run, the body dumps a lot of sugar into the bloodstream to use for energy. However, with insulin resistance, it's not able to convert that sugar into energy and it causes you to um, uh, gain weight instead. And third, metabolic dysfunction. Studies have shown that weight training had, uh, can increase uh, metabolism for up to three days. And when you keep that lean muscle mass, you will permanently increase your metabolism so it's at an elevated level. Why is this? Because when you have muscle in the body, it actually needs energy compared to fat. So when you have fat in the body, it just stays there. It doesn't require energy. It's like a depot. For muscle, however, it always requires energy. It always requires um energy coming from uh, from your body, like your metabolism as a result gets elevated to support the muscle. And as a result, you're burning more calories by just sitting down and um, things like that. So uh, with that being said, we would recommend slow weighted workouts. And if you're looking to learn how to do slow weighted workouts, if you're looking for um, just workouts in general, the, sister the sisterhood membership has that for you. Monthly workout programs that change every single month. We just had a new one. And we're doing live workouts now every month. So if you join us uh, today, you'll be able to join our next live workout, which is coming up very soon. And um, we also help you like learn how to go gluten and dairy free, all in a step by step process. Because somebody earlier was asking about, I don't know where to start. I don't know like what would be your number one thing to go with. And honestly, the sisterhood helps you do all of that. You start right away with discovering your PCOS type, discovering what vitamins and what um, diet and lifestyle can be best for you once you figure once you figure out your PCOS type and from there we help you go gluten free first and then we help you go dairy free we help you find your carb tolerance and we help you learn how to work out these are all five different stages you, you learn these by going through the videos uh, and then as you watch the videos you check mark you get points for check marking things off and you can use those points to get free stuff like meal kits uh, dessert kits yoga kits all these fun stuff and you get two live calls with us you get um you also get the private facebook group where you're able to share your day-to-day -day experiences ask us your questions directly and so much more and there's a recipe section that's all gluten dairy free for breakfast lunch and dinner and all of that and ajj says talia looks so pretty i can't I, I agree with you and Shrop says you guys make PCOS. You guys make having PCOS so much fun. I mean, we want to make it, it really fun is. to manage it. Why is yeah. it like honestly doing all this self-care, 
eating well, learning to cook, these all can be very fun. Yeah. And the worst part is the beginning where you're trying to figure out what the hell is happening and what, what the problem is. But once you get down to it and you get some good blood work or you incorporate some great lifestyle changes and you put the pieces together yourself, that's when you see the results. Yeah. Honestly, it took me like so many years to add up all the different components that treat my PCOS type and create this lifestyle for myself. Yeah. And that's because I didn't have proper blood work done or I did and I didn't know how to read it and interpret it. And nobody told me and there was no Instagram, so on and so forth. And it's not protocol to do these lifestyle changes for PCOS. Typically, they just say take birth control. No one even mentions that you can do anything to help yeah. it. So that was my journey. It took me forever to learn to go gluten and dairy free, to know which supplements to take, learn about Ovacetol, how that's going to help with my um, period regulation and um, learn how to work out for PCOS. Like I had to meet Sirak to learn that and incorporate it, it and realize like what all that cardio was doing for my stress hormones. Like no one told me these things. And yeah. we have taken all of this information and created it into this wonderful membership where you can learn all about it in a fun, informative way that creates like a happy, safe environment for you to succeed with reversing your PCOS yeah. instead of feeling intimidated, overwhelmed, upset. It's taking forever. This is something that we've broken down from my experience and my experience working with patients who have PCOS. And these are very applicable things to your lifestyle Absolutely. that we show you how to do in the sisterhood. Yeah. And we're so confident that you would enjoy it and um, you would learn something from it. So feel free to join. It comes with a three-day trial. So you can really see if it's going to help you and decide to stay after those three days if you really like it. And um, Anastasia said, um, oh, I don't want to miss her. You, you motivate me every day. I love you, she says. Well, we love you too, Anastasia. And you know what? Today, you are, you are today's giveaway winner. Congratulations. You're going to get a three-month supply of Ovacetol. Just a heads up to everybody, um, we do a giveaway every single live. So if you're new, every time we have a live, we do a giveaway of acetol, CBD, the membership. So um, I would just highly suggest turn on your notifications for our account so that when we go live, you'll be able to get notified so you can join and, um, and have a chance to win a giveaway. So with that being said. With that being said, sisters, it was lovely chatting with you. Yes, very nice chatting with you guys, uh, answering your questions and, and helping as best as we can. We'll be back uh, most likely on Friday. So we do a live on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday. Oh, we got a gift from Princess. Thank you so much. So um, we, we do a live Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, giveaway every time. And um, uh, yeah, so we'll be back Friday to answer more questions. If you like our talks, if you like our chemistry, then go listen to our podcast, A Sister yeah. and Her Mister, available on all podcast platforms, um, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Your Mom's Stereo, everywhere you can listen. Your Mom's Stereo. That's right. So you go ahead and listen to the podcast to, to hear more. And yeah. Awesome. It was so nice chatting with you, sisters. Yes. Hopefully, we'll see you in the sisterhood. Yes. We have a Facebook group, and we're always in there yammering it away, giving great advice to our fellow sisters. Absolutely. All right, everyone. We love y'all. Have a great Talk day. Soon. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Boom. Bye, TikTok. And bye to Haiti. I just joined the sisterhood Saturday. I'm excited.